You're using Notion Calendar wrong. It's not just for scheduling events. Here are four ways that I use Notion Calendar. Skip to this timestamp if you already have Notion Calendar set up. But if you don't, I'm going to show you right now how to set up your Notion Calendar. So here is a blank Notion document. And basically databases in Notion connect to your Notion calendar. So I'm going to write forward slash calendar. Now with this calendar view, I'm just going to click new calendar for those of you who don't have a calendar. If you have an existing task list database, so forward slash data table view, and we'll just say that this is your task list, you can turn this into a calendar view. We're going to need the calendar view. So this layout here of calendar, we're going to need that in order to create our Notion calendar. So as you can see here, here we have the button opening calendar. That's because it is a calendar view, but a table view or these other views that you see here, they will not be able to display as a calendar, but we are able to see this table here. So if you have a table, so we have task one, task two, task three, we are able to see this here as a calendar as well. So all you have to do is right click on table and do duplicate. And here we can say, change the layout from table to calendar. So now we are seeing this information as a calendar. So we can rename this if we want to calendar. And as you can see magically, this date property here appeared. So it's only appearing here because we now have this calendar view and you can see open in calendar here. So these two here are connected. So if I say anything here, like add it to today's date, if I go to the calendar here, you can see task one on today's date. It is the same data, but it's just showing it to me in multiple different views in different layouts. So I could also see it as a chart. I could see it as a gallery. I could see it as a list or as a board or as a timeline. That's the awesome thing with Notion here. Now Notion released Notion calendar, which lets me see it not only as a calendar like this, but connected to my Google account. So that way I can see all of my Google events and my Notion task list in the same place. So I'll just delete these tasks to start fresh. Now, the first mistake you're making in Notion Calendar is not using it to time block. So right now I can just add a task here like run from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Honestly, I can't run for that long, but it doesn't matter. So here we have run and that's appearing because we clicked on the open in calendar button. So they are talking to each other. But typically what people do is they write their task list like journal, write reports and make presentation. Having a task list is step one of productivity. It's going to be very difficult to plan out our day even if we add all of these tasks to today. So let's say I add all of these tasks from my task list to my calendar here. So they're all sitting here but I don't know when I'm meant to do these throughout the day and I don't know how long they're going to take. So if I go back to Notion Calendar, you can see automatically they've appeared here at the top. Now what I can do is drag these into place and start planning out my day. Now, as you can see, it's this time here, hence this line here, but I can start planning out the rest of my day here. So I can say, all right, you know what? I'll write the report from 12 to three, make the presentation from three to four. Most people in Notion Calendar are just adding fixed event like doctor's appointments or going to a yoga session, something like that. But we want to add in our task list here as well. That way we know, is this day going to be achievable and when am I going to do it? This is called time blocking and it works so well. Now, the second mistake that I see with people's Notion calendar is not using it as a habit tracker. See, let's say I run here and let's just make it simple and I run here as well. So I'm running today, tomorrow and the next day. Instead of separating them and having a separate habit tracker that everyone seems to do, let's build it into my one database. So if I go back here, I can see run, run and run appearing here. And if I click here, I can also see them here. Now, what I'm going to do in order to track my habits is simply click here on run and let's add a tag called habit. And what I'll do is add a filter here to say where the tag is habit. And now I'm seeing every single time that I've gone running in here. And what I can even do is calculate and do count and count all. So every single time that I run, I can see this counter here. So I run three times. So now my Notion calendar has all of my fixed events, like my doctor's appointment and going to yoga. It's time blocking the tasks that I need doing, and it's actually tracking all of my habits. Now you might be saying, what if I have many habits? I don't just run. Let's say another habit that you have is reading 30 minutes. So I'll say from 9 a.m. to 9.30. Well, you can see here, reading 30 minutes is appearing. Now I can say that this is a habit, but what I can do in habits here is actually click on these three dots, click on group, and I can group by the name. 
Now, because these are all called the same thing, run, run, and run, they will appear here under run, and we have reading 30 minutes appearing here. These are being grouped by the same name. So that way I don't have to create a bunch of different tags here being reading habit, running habit, yada yada. I can simply separate it here with the name property. This is so useful, we're not having habit tracking as a separate database to go and check. Now the third mistake is planning your day like this. Here you can see I do the doctor's appointment from 7am to 8am, then yoga 7am to 8am, run, run. Okay, this isn't a very good plan. Now, why is this a bad plan? That's because I like using my energy in the morning to work on the Eat the Frog. Now, what's Eat the Frog? Basically, there's this book by Brian Tracy, very good. It's called Eat That Frog. And what you want to do is use your morning for the most important task of the day. And you're spending all this energy on stuff that is obviously important, but it might not be the most important thing for the day. Things that are far away from my eyes are fuzzy. I once ate a Twix with the wrapper on it, and I've never seen the wrapper come out. Did we need that doctor's appointment from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m.? when we could possibly do it at three to four. If we could get a booking at that time, it might be better. Same thing with yoga. If health is a priority right now in life, then you might wanna do yoga first thing. But if it's something that is not your highest priority right now, it's still something you obviously wanna make time for, so it's still on the calendar. But let's say uh, you're trying to build your own business right now. Let's say that this is your Etsy block and you're trying to start an Etsy business. You are going to do this first thing in the morning when you have the highest amount of energy. This is the thing that is going to drain your energy. It's maybe the thing that you're not looking forward to. If you have to eat a frog at some point in the day, then you eat it first thing in the morning. So we're going to block off this time here in the morning, so time blocking, for the frogs that we are going to eat. After a long day, you're not going to want to sit down now at 6 p.m. and do Etsy. You're way too tired. You've just been at work all day or whatever it is. So we're going to do it first thing in the morning. Use Notion Calendar to plan out what frog you are going to eat every single day. I have tracked pretty much every minute of my time for the past six months, or it's probably more than six months now. And it has changed my life. I talk about this a lot in my Notion Productivity course. It is truly one of the best things you can do. And what most people do is have a separate time tracking database in here. So they do forward slash table view, time tracking, blah, 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 and they write it in here. Well, the cool thing is we can actually, once again, do it in this existing task list database. Because this task list has open and calendar, these two are speaking to each other. So you understand time blocking, which is what we're doing here, is planning for the future. Time tracking is what we're doing here. It's what we've done in the past. So this running and this journal, for example, are tasks I've completed. So what I'll do in here is click on run and add a property here. And this property is going to be the checkbox property. So I'll tick this in and I'll tick in journal as well. These are the two tasks that I've completed. Now what I'm going to do is right click on table and we'll call it time track. And I'm going to add a filter here saying I only wanna see stuff that's been checked in. So we're going to say where the checkbox is checked. And now you can see that we have the run and we have the journal showing up in here. Obviously this doesn't look very pretty. You know, we can drag this here to the side, put it here to the side, drag that there maybe. But as you can see, this data here, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., instead of me having to manually add this up, maths is disgusting, we're not gonna do that. We are actually just going to use a formula. We're going to click on formula. Now, if you haven't used formula before, Yes, they sound scary, but it's pretty easy. And it's even easier because this formula is linked in my description, so you can just copy and paste it. We're going to paste this here. And I'm just going to explain what it is. We are saying to this database here, give me the date between in minutes, hence it's minutes here, give me the date between the date end and the date start. We're saying do that maths for me. So then when I click on done, you can see here 60 minutes between 7 a.m. to 8 a.m and 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. is 120 minutes. If you're saying, ooh, that's gross, I don't want to know the calculated minutes here, I want to know the hours, that's completely fine. We'll click on the plus here, and now we are going to do another formula, and this formula is gonna be a lot easier. You won't have to copy and paste this one. What we are going to want to know is this formula, which is called formula here, divided by 60. So minutes into hours, divide by 60, and then click on done. So now we can see here formula one, one hour and two hour. And we can do calculate, more options, sum. So now I'm seeing that. And of course you can rename this to hours and we can rename this to minutes. And because Notion is so amazing, it actually automatically updates these formulas so you don't have to change the code. Now the cool thing here that you can do is start adding properties and stuff 
to all of these different tasks that you're doing. So running, journaling, writing report, making presentations, reading 30 minutes, all of this can be separated by projects and life buckets so you know where your time is going. I've actually done this in headquarters, which is my second brain template. And then you can even reflect on that data to see what's the stuff that you're doing that's moving the needle. This has helped me identify the stuff that I should be focusing my time on. If you're looking for a place for your tasks, projects, life buckets, time tracking, journaling, and so much more, then check out this video here of headquarters. It has over 1,500 users and a five-star rating. If you've gotten this far in the video, you are going to love it.